Good afternoon, everybody. Today we're exploring a conceptual problem dealing with Newton's third law and how to apply that in our free body diagram drawings. And so the problem starts off by telling us that we have a large box containing a computer that's sitting in the bed of our pickup truck. We're stopped at a red light, then the light turns green and we stomp on the gas, and then the truck accelerates. As a result of this, the box begins to slide towards the back of the truck in this direction here that I'm drawing in this black arrow. Our job is to draw clearly labeled free body diagrams for the truck and the box. And then we have to indicate pairs of forces that are action-reaction pairs, if any of them. And the final really important piece of information is that the bed of the truck is not frictionless. Very important. Essentially, this is explicit instructions to include some kind of frictional uh, or kinetic friction between the bed of the truck and this box here. And we'll see how that plays out in a moment. First, let's start off with the free body diagram of the truck. I tend to draw my free body diagrams as um, the object that we're evaluating. Um, it's a dot, okay, kind of keeps things simple. And then we have kind of a mini coordinate system kind of coming out of that object that we can draw our vectors on. And this will be our familiar X and Y. And we'll start off by isolating the forces in just one direction. And I think the easiest thing to start with is the vertical direction, because as this truck accelerates and drives along the road, we're not told any specific situation where it you know, veers off into space or tunnels into the ground or something like that. And so it's very reasonable to assume that the normal force and the weight of the total um, uh, of this box and the truck together, they're equal and opposite in ma magnitude. And uh, let me kind of draw this here. So we say that this one would be the normal force of the truck plus the box and then this would be the weight of the truck plus the box again equal and opposite in magnitude okay and that's it for uh, what's going on with the truck in the y direction what about the x direction um, well, we know that there's going to be some sort of friction going on with the box. What about anything else? Are there any other surfaces that are experiencing motion as a result of the truck moving? Well, yes, there actually is. There's four of them. They're called the tires. Um, as the truck uh, moves forward, it causes the tires to spin in this clockwise direction, which essentially does this kind of backward push off of the ground. And we know that friction opposes motion. And if the motion of the truck causes the wheels to turn in such a direction where they point to the left once they hit the ground, well, then that means that the opposing kinetic friction has to point to the right. FK road is what we'll call it. And there's going to be, um, you know, two instances of that for the front tires, and there will be two instances of this, you know, kinetic friction due to the road on the back tires. And so, really, the whole truck experiences four times whatever the kinetic friction is 
between the road and an individual tire. Probably a fairly large number, especially if we're taking four times that. So let's draw that as a relatively large vector. And I'm going to label that as F K road. So that does it for the tires, but what about the bed of the truck? You know, we're told that we have to include this based on the problem description, so we can't ignore it. Um, when it comes to the object experiencing motion, remember, friction opposes the movement. So if the truck is the object that is experiencing the motion in the perspective that we're focusing on, and that means that then the box moves in a direction that opposes it, well, then this has to be due to friction, based on what I just stated there. So, from the truck's perspective, specifically, that's kind of an important thing to say there, the kinetic friction, oh, that should be a little bit thicker, there we go, the kinetic friction due to the interaction between the bed of the truck and the box points to the left. Some of you may look at the direction of this vector and the direction that I've kind of drawn here in the picture and think, well, shouldn't it point in the opposite direction? Shouldn't FK be like this for the bed? I've seen many people ask that question. And the answer is uh, yes, if we're looking at the free body diagram of the box. But we're not. We're looking at the free body diagram of the truck. And the truck is what's doing the movement there. So this is all we needed to include for the free body diagram of the truck. If we go back to the free body diagram of the box, I think uh, many people who understand the way that the problem has been approached so far would kind of understand that we could use the same idea when saying that um, the normal force and the weight of the box are equal and opposite in magnitude. Okay, we're looking at just the box here, the normal box, weight box, equal and opposite magnitude. Just as a rem uh, reminder, excuse me, why? Well, um, the box doesn't float up in the air and it doesn't go on the ground as the truck accelerates and moves along. Um, or rather, from the perspective of the box, as it slides towards the back. So these two forces the normal of the box and the weight of the box, which are smaller in length than the normal and the weight of the previous free body diagram, they're equal and opposite in magnitude. So, um, now, what about the uh, horizontal direction? Okay, I just caught uh, the way that we're supposed to be thinking about this when um, thinking from the perspective of the box. The box feels like it is sliding to the back. It doesn't necessarily know that the truck is what's moving forward kind of underneath it. So if the perspective of the box involves the box experiencing motion to the left, well that means that the friction of the bed uh, grinding against the box needs to oppose that and it needs to point to the right. So if I draw that here, oops, if I draw that here, roughly the same length as how I drew it here in the truck, I'm going to label it the same and say F K bed. And that's it. That's all the um, all the necessary forces included on the free body diagram 
of the truck by itself, right? Where we said uh, truck was doing the moving. And then we had the free body diagram here of the box where we said uh, box was doing, oh, pardon me, I'm kind of squishing that a little bit here, doing the moving. Okay. And that's it. So we need to indicate which pairs of forces are action-reaction pairs. And let's just remind ourselves um, what is an action reaction pair? Well, I can make it very simple. An action reaction pair meets two criteria. An action reaction pair needs to be uh, equal and opposite in magnitude or equal and opposite in length when it comes to drawing these pairs on the free body diagrams. Okay, So they need to be equal and opposite in length and perhaps most importantly and okay, they need to act on different objects. They cannot act on the same object. What do I mean by that? Well, I'd like to use the example of the normal force and the weight to illustrate um, why they're not action-reaction pairs. So if we look at the normal force of the truck and the box and the weight of the truck and the box, do they meet the criteria for equal and opposite in length? Yes, they do. Do they act on different objects? No, they do not. Why? Well, they're drawn from the same source on the free body diagram. They emanate from the same dot, if that makes any sense. Okay? They may can they cancel each other out on the same free body diagram. That's bad. We can't have that. So that means the normal force and the weight for the truck and for the box, for anything really, these are not action-reaction pairs. Okay, So let's just get rid of this here. What other forces can we investigate that might be action-reaction pairs? Well, there's the force of the kinetic friction due to the road. Uh, however, there's no other forces between these two that are equal and opposite in length. This one is really long, points to the right. We don't have another one that's really long and points to the left. So first condition is already out. So we can ignore the kinetic friction due to the road. Well, what force is left? That would be the kinetic friction due to the interaction between the bed of the truck and the box. Well. If we look on the free body diagram of the truck, it's of a relatively short length, and it points to the left. If I look on the free body diagram of the box, we've got the same force, relatively short, but points to the right. So equal and opposite length between these two free body diagrams here, uh, yes, that does meet that criteria. So first condition met. Do these act on different objects? Yes, they do. What do I mean by that? So this force here acts on this dot here. It points to the left out of this dot on the truck. This force here, the same one, if you switch your perspective of the box, points to the right and comes out of this dot representing the box. So they act on different objects. The arrows are drawn from different dots. They definitely cancel each other out, but what's more important is, yes, they do act on different objects. They emanate from different dots. So, boom, that is the only um, action-reaction pair here.
the force of friction between the bed of the truck and the box itself. And what I'll do is I'll circle that in um, maybe like a, a <laughs> I've kind of used almost all the colors here, brown here, brown color here, brown. So we'll call this action and this one reaction. Okay. And so what is an action reaction? I kind of missed the word pair down here, didn't I? <laughs> action reaction pair. Equal and opposite length act on different objects. And the, our uh, action reaction pair in this problem was the force of kinetic friction acting on um, the bed of the truck and the box here. And then the force of friction acting on uh, the bed of the box or the bed of the truck and the box in this free body diagram here. So that is the entire problem done. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.